Welcome, I'm Kyle Saska, and I'm proud to share with you work that my colleagues and I have done on cryptocurrency derivatives, and in particular, the BitMEX exchange. To understand how the BitMEX exchange fits into the ecosystem of cryptocurrency trading, it's important to consider the history of cryptocurrency exchanges. In the early days, a spot market was formed where Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies were being exchanged for fiat currencies such as US dollars. Following the formation of the spot market, though, it wasn't clear what it was that customers really wanted to trade or what other services were demanded. A lot of exchanges began offering things such as margin trading to allow users to get leveraged exposure to cryptocurrency, while exchanges like BitMEX, which was founded in November of 2014, offered various kinds of derivatives products. The ecosystem hadn't really converged on anything in particular, though. 2016, BitMEX invented what they called the perpetual Bitcoin future, and by 2018, this instrument had gained a tremendous amount of popularity. Other participants in the ecosystem took note, and new exchanges formed trading almost exclusively this instrument. Additionally, many existing exchanges began to integrate this into their offerings. So to understand modern cryptocurrency trading today, it's important to understand BitMEX. The following diagram represents BitMEX prior to November of 2020 when formal customer verification was introduced. Customers on the left-hand side simply register an email account with BitMEX in order to create a trading account. BitMEX used GeoIP filtering in order to filter out traders from particular countries such as the United States. However, it's folklore that services such as VPNs and other IP obfuscation techniques could be used to circumvent this filter. BitMEX exists entirely on top of Bitcoin, meaning that they don't trade any fiat currencies, nor do they trade stablecoins such as Tether. Instead, each user account on BitMEX is associated with a unique Vanity Bitcoin address that takes customer deposits and uses it to fund their account. Additionally, all profits are also paid to traders in Bitcoin. In addition to derivatives products, BitMEX also implements a number of social features, such as the public leaderboard, as well as a site-wide chat room called a Trollbox. In the troll box, there's unique features such as macros that allow users to share ground truth information about their positions, their profits and losses, and any orders that they've submitted. Consider the following example about the products that BitMEX trades. You have two traders, Alice and Bob. Alice wants long Bitcoin exposure and Bob wants short Bitcoin exposure. So what they can agree to do is trade a contract whose value is defined to be $1 worth of Bitcoin. So as the price of Bitcoin fluctuates, the amount of Bitcoin represented by the contract also fluctuates. The long side of the contract is paid the initial contract's Bitcoin value minus the final contract's Bitcoin value, and the short side of the contract is paid the opposite. So for example, if a contract is opened with an initial value of $10,000 per Bitcoin and closed at a price of $100,000 per Bitcoin, the long side profits 9,000 sats, and the short side loses 9,000 sats. So to see how this could be implemented into a trade, suppose that Alice has 0.1 Bitcoins worth of margin and Bob has five Bitcoins worth of margin. The two parties agree to open 50,000 contracts at a Bitcoin price of 10,000 US dollars. And in this case, we would say that Alice is 50 times leverage long because the size of her Bitcoin position exceeds her margin by a factor of 50. And similarly, Bob is one times leverage short because his Bitcoin position equals his margin. If the price of Bitcoin were to go up to $12,500 from there, the value of those 50,000 contracts would now be four Bitcoins. According to the payoffs, Alice makes one Bitcoin and Bob loses one Bitcoin. Notice, however, that Bob's US dollar exposure has actually stayed the same. This is because a one times leverage short effectively produces US dollar exposure, and that's one of the main applications of these kinds of contracts is hedging. Now, on the other hand, if the price had gone down to $9,804, the value of those 50,000 contracts would have ascended to 5.1 Bitcoins. At this point, Alice has no more margin left, and the exchange as an act of risk management forcibly closes Alice's position in a process referred to as liquidation. The analysis on our project builds on three pillars of data, the first is the Bitcoin blockchain itself, on which we found over 610,000 accounts associated with BitMEX. We've identified over 20 million flows, totaling over 6 million Bitcoins. 
The largest accounts on BitMEX appear to have over 10,000 Bitcoins in them. The most profitable traders on the exchange appear to have extracted over 40,000 Bitcoins in profits. Additionally, we have the Trollbox, which is the site-wide chat room, which has had nearly 60 million messages spanning seven languages and over 150,000 unique contributors. Additionally, we've identified 425,000 public liquidation events, totaling over 60 billion US dollars in value on here. There's also over a million positional, PL, and order data points with account and timestamping information included. We also have price and volume data for all of the instruments traded on BitMEX, as well as a number of the spot markets that comprise its most popular Bitcoin index. The following plot shows the on chain activity of BitMEX accounts over time. We cannot in general know when a trader on BitMEX is actively engaging in a trade, but our best proxy for that is looking at their on chain activity, such as sending fresh Bitcoins to their account in order to get an idea of when users are active. We can see that despite the decline in prices in 2018, the activity of accounts on BitMEX was actually increasing and it hit a crescendo in the selling of November of 2018. Additionally, the large downturn in the price of cryptocurrency in March of 2020 corresponded to an increase in the number of accounts on chain. The reported trading volumes on BitMEX tell a similar story. Despite the decline in cryptocurrency prices in 2018, trading volumes on BitMEX remained elevated, trading over $3 billion per day on a sustained basis. We can also see that the perpetual Bitcoin future is above and beyond all of the other categories, the most popular product on the platform and continues to be so today. Our on-chain analysis of BitMEX provides us with a number of insights about its holdings. From early 2018 into early 2019, the holdings on BitMEX were steadily increasing and didn't decrease in a meaningful way until the price of Bitcoin rose in the summer of 2019. Following this, the holdings on BitMEX began steadily increasing again, hitting a maximum in the selling events of March of 2020. After this, they sharply declined, and in late 2020, the United States Department of Justice issued an indictment against BitMEX, cutting its holdings nearly in half. We can also look at the distribution of how Bitcoins are held on the exchange. In July of 2018, over half of all the Bitcoins on the exchange were held by accounts valued at 10 Bitcoins or less. By 2019, though, this distribution had changed dramatically. It appears that the selling events of November of 2018 created a set of winners and losers. Many accounts were wiped out, while others increased their Bitcoin holdings dramatically. We need to be a little bit careful about what we infer from this data though. BitMEX has arbitrary control over its holdings. However, we spot checked a few accounts that were donated to us, and it appears that the profits and losses on those accounts was eventually reconciled to the blockchain. In 2019 though, when the price of Bitcoin dropped from $10,000 to $8,000, BitMEX dramatically rearranged a number of accounts on the exchange. We believe that this rearrangement does not correspond to the reconciliation of profits and losses, but rather has something to do with either a cold storage implementation or funds that were earmarked for its insurance fund being aggregated together. We can also look at this distribution using a heat map. Here we have a heat map of the fraction of all Bitcoins in BitMEX's custody that reside in accounts of various sizes. The y-axis is batching customer accounts based on the total balance that they have in terms of Bitcoin, and the x-axis is batching the Bitcoin blockchain into three-day windows. Each cell gets a color that ranges from blue, indicating no fractional ownership of BitMEX's Bitcoins, to bright yellow, which indicates a 10% ownership or more. We have also overlaid the price of Bitcoin in order to immediately make clear any correlations between the on-chain rearrangements and the price of Bitcoin. We can see that the selling in November of 2018 caused a dramatic void in fractional ownership by these sort of like one to 10 Bitcoin tier accounts. And we can also see the rearrangement that took place in 2019. We suspect that this bright yellow strip here, which is BitMEX accounts that have almost exactly 1,000 Bitcoins in them and have never received any external funds from non-BitMEX accounts are actually either part of a cold storage mechanism or are earmarked as part of the insurance fund. Because BitMEX didn't have any formal customer verification for quite a while, it was possible to engage with BitMEX by using multiple accounts. 
We clustered BitMEX accounts and found several instances where a single entity was believed to engage with BitMEX using hundreds of accounts. What we found is that in general, accounts that are part of a cluster tend to have more money and engage in more on-chain transactions than those that are their singletons. We also found many instances where clusters appeared to be used as part of a high-frequency trading or real-time arbitrage strategy, or where clusters were used to hide funds that were being sent to the exchange by breaking them into much smaller transactions, and instances where likely the leverage limitations applied to big positions were being circumvented. Looking at the comment frequency in the troll box produces a distribution similar to the trading volume on BitMEX. There was a sharp uptick in early 2018 that sustained even through the bear market. From 2018 to 2020, the troll box was more prolific than many of the most popular cryptocurrency subreddits. What's interesting to note here is that English is only the second most popular language in the troll box. Green is actually number one. If we look at hours of the day, we can see in particular for Korean that the most popular hour of the day is only about 1.6 times as many messages as the least popular hour of the day. Now, this is interesting because well over 90% of all the Korean speakers in the world live in a few consecutive time zones. And to sort of get an understanding of the significantness of this, we looked at recreational activities such as video games and measured games that are localized to a particular region and found that their ratios are closer to six or seven. So this relative invariance to time of day indicates to us that for many of these traders, this is more than just a game or an activity. This is something closer to a lifestyle or an obsession. BitMEX is notorious for very, very large liquidation events. Here at the top, we have the price of Bitcoin plotted over time. And on the bottom, we have a seven day moving average of the long and short liquidations that have occurred over that same time. We've also labeled some of the significant events that have occurred. And what we can see is that usually when there's a very large spike in liquidations, it's the long side of the contract that's being liquidated. There are a few exceptions, such as number three, which is a coordinated buying event that took place in 2019, as well as what the community refers to as the she candle labeled as number six. Unfortunately, during the exact drop in March of 2020, we do not have troll box data, but if we did and we had the liquidation events during this time, it would likely rival if not exceed the selling event in November of 2018. Additionally, after contacting BitMEX about our paper, the rect bot, which provides these liquidation events in the troll box, was coincidentally turned off just a few hours later. And a few months after that, it appears to have been turned back on. Taking a closer look at the liquidations on BitMEX, we can see from this cumulative distribution that small position sizes contribute a large factor of the total liquidation volume. In fact, liquidations of $1.5 million and less contribute over half of all the liquidation volume on the platform. Now, $1.5 million sounds like a lot, but recall that this is the total position size after up to 100 turns of leverage has been applied to it. Additionally, if we look at the difference between long and short liquidations, we can see that at all liquidation sizes, there are more longs being liquidated than short liquidations. So I encourage anybody who's interested to read our paper. There's a number of experiments in there that were omitted from this talk. And to conclude, BitMEX really popularized modern cryptocurrency derivatives with the perpetual futures instrument. They absolutely thrived in the 2018 bear market, and their instrument has gone on to be adopted by the rest of the ecosystem today. The account wealth, at least on-chain, has become more and more concentrated over time, and many of the traders on the platform appear to be time of day invariant. Additionally, liquidations are largely comprised of smaller positions, and we note a distinct asymmetry in the observed liquidation behavior of both long and short positions. We have a public analysis platform that is available at cryptotrade.scilab.cmu.edu. On this, we have a number of experiments that are not in the paper or the presentation, as well as any code and data that we used. Thank you.